Before getting into the full details of studio, console, and DAW signal flow, it's worth taking a couple of videos to first go over the most basic aspects of studio hookup. This will be mainly for the benefit of studio novices or non-technical small studio operators. More experienced studio users may want to just skip ahead. The simplest studios nowadays are those that are almost entirely in the box. DAW-based workstations, where mixing and the vast majority of the signal routing is done in the virtual domain. But even in the most basic garageband type production setup, of course, there'll still be some wiring and signal routing that needs to be done in the analog domain. While a lot of audio or music can be generated right inside the DAW nowadays, as soon as it's time to add the vocals, or any non-digital instrument parts, you're out in the real world, and that requires a little familiarity with at least the most basic analog signal flow. Getting good quality audio or music signals into the DAW initially requires dealing with a few signal flow considerations, input types, cable types, and levels. For any serious work, the computer's built-in audio I.O. input and output connections won't be suitable, so DAW users will need a dedicated audio interface to bring audio in for recording and send audio out for monitoring. I'll go over the interface-to-computer connection in a later video, but for now I'm going to just stick to the analog signal flow involved. There are several types of cables and connections in use in most studios. Balanced XLR cables and jacks offer greater rejection of hum and noise and are required for microphones and preferred for professional connections. The most common connection type is the ubiquitous quarter-inch cable. These come in two varieties, balanced TRS and unbalanced TS. A balanced TRS quarter-inch connection uses three signal conductors, like an XLR cable, tip, ring, and sleeve for ground. An unbalanced TS quarter-inch connection uses only two conductors, tip and sleeve. TRS and TS input plugs look almost the same, but the cables are visually distinguished by the extra ring on the TRS plug. Sometimes consumer standard RCA connections are used, though for analog audio signals, most pro and semi-pro gear utilizes quarter inch. On the output side, while a home or small studio operator could, in theory, monitor directly through the computer's built-in speakers or headphones, most people, with good reason, will want to take advantage of the better sound quality from proper studio monitors, so the stereo audio will be brought out into the real world and sent to those speakers. There are two ways to set this up. Traditionally, you'd have an amp and a set of passive speakers. The output from the computer or interface would be an audio signal sent to a suitable power amp, and then, of course, from amp to speakers with proper speaker cable, not stray audio cables. That amp could be a part of a receiver or integrated amp, but a better choice might be a dedicated power amp. More commonly nowadays, most studio monitors are active, or powered, speakers with the amp or amps built in. This eliminates the need to worry about making sure that the speakers and amp impedances are a proper match, and ensures adequate power for a particular speaker. Powered speakers will have suitable audio connections right on the back of the speakers themselves. Either way, you have to make sure the outputs from the DAW use the same standard operating level as the inputs on the amp or powered speakers. There are two different level standards, plus 4 dBU for pro and semi-pro gear, and minus 10 dBV for consumer gear. Usually pro or semi-pro plus 4 devices will use balanced quarter-inch TRS or even XLR connections, while minus 10 consumer equipment will use RCA cables. If both devices, interface and amp or speakers, don't utilize the same standard, like if for some reason you have to plug a plus 4 output from a pro interface into a consumer amp or receiver with minus 10 RCA input jacks, you may need more than an adapter cable. You might want to utilize a level matching box to ensure proper transfer of the signal. These are relatively inexpensive and readily available. On the input side, basically there are three types of input connections. Mic, line, and instrument. I'll pick up there in the next video.